guys, beautiful good evening here from Sofia Airport to be flying Wintrose, a charter airline from the Ukraine to Kiev today. But what you see in the background is a Tupolev 134 as well as a Yak 42. So if you ever happen to come to Sofia, take a few minutes and come and check out those Soviet beauties here, a former Bulgarian Airlines plane. I bet that was the time when Bulgarian Airlines was still decent, absolute crap airline, do not recommend. But now let's go into Terminal 1, which also looks very Soviet here in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, and then we are off to the Ukraine. So let's do this, let's fly to Kiev. Today's journey starts at Terminal 1, which was originally opened in 1937, just before the Second World War started, which still shows once you're inside the building with its very unique architecture. This terminal is home to all the low-cost airlines as well as charter flights. So look at this absolute beauty, Soviet beauty of an airport right here with those beautiful mosaics. Pre-COVID, the airport handled roughly 7 million passengers annually, with London being the busiest route. But today I'm taking a two-hour journey to Kiev, which is also operated by Ryanair, Bulgaria Air and SkyUp. But let's have a look at the only lounge available in Terminal 1, which you can enter with your priority pass if you happen to have one. So I made it to this beautiful Sofia lounge, looks a bit like an office space. Um, has nice views over the tarmac, kind of, and there's an Omni Air International 767, two of them, which currently fly shuttle service between Sofia and Washington uh, to uh, rescue or relocate Afghan refugees from Kabul. So they fly from Kabul, they drop them here, and then they be flown onwards to um, Washington on those uh, 767s, uh, 300 extra ER extra range uh, planes. You don't see them that often, it's like a charter airline, Omni Air International. Now you know, it's quite a hot spot here, Sofia, quite a lot of things happening here. Like it. I then made my way to the gate and let's talk about today's airline, Windrose. The Ukrainian-based charter airline has been flying since 2003. The airline operates four Airbus A321s, six ATR72 and five Embraer's 145, which I have the pleasure to fly with today. My plane was originally delivered to Ar Italia Express almost 20 years ago and was then sold to Dnipravia, I hope I pronounced it right, another Ukrainian based airline in 2010. They went bankrupt in 2017 and the Embraer ended up with Vintros, which she's still flying with today. Dora I was welcomed by a very young and very polite cabin crew member and she was also the only one on this flight. The Embraer 145 comes in a 2-1 configuration with a total of 48 seats and on this flight almost every seat was taken. I picked one of the single seats and to be honest I really enjoyed them. They are as spacious as it possibly could be on an Embraer and of course very private. But while I was exploring the seat, the captain made a rather worrying public announcement. And indeed, the weather was a bit out of control, with heaps of rain and lightnings, delaying our departure by 30 minutes. We then made our way to the runway, where an Eastern 767, probably else on a government mission, took off against the storm.
20 minutes would be remembered as one of my scariest climb with very, very intense turbulences. Quite a bumpy ride out of uh, Sofia. Uh, we've been probably like been climbing for for 20 minutes, and all I can see still is just clouds and clouds and clouds, and it's bumpy like crazy. Especially in those little planes, it seems like that you feel the turbulence is much more intense than uh, on other planes. But uh, yeah, you know. I don't mind turbulences that much, but it's just pretty intense here. We finally reached our cruising altitude and with it a smoother flying experience. This was also the moment when the crew member started its onboard service. So in terms of service, we were just given a free bottle of water uh, as well as some wet wipes. Uh, All-time classic now during the uh, pandemic and uh, the cabin crew just made an announcement saying that uh, there's now a buy on board service where you can get alcoholic beverages, uh, snacks, etc, etc, which you can purchase with your credit card or Rivnas, Euros or US dollars, she said, so just so you know. And uh, what was included in my booking, uh, checked luggage of 22 kilograms and uh, I had to pay extra for the seat, so I picked 16A, uh, that was another 10 euros, which interestingly you couldn't purchase during the booking process, but only later on the website, which was a rather complicated, but uh, it still worked out. So, not much highlights on this flight, to be honest, uh, I mean, the climb was quite dramatic, um, so I'm definitely going to give you though, a Lou review in a little bit. There's a very tiny small Lou in the back, uh, so I'm very curious to see what it looks like. It was then time for the Lou review, but the bathroom smelled like a dirty train station toilet and it was incredibly loud inside. You wouldn't even be able to hear your own fart inside. That's how loud it was. So I decided to go back to my seat and rather skip the Lou review. I enjoyed the rest of the journey and we started our descent into Kiev with some stunning sunset views over the Ukrainian capital. We then took a sharp right turn before touching down in Borispol airport. Flying Windrose was a very decent experience to be honest and I was pleasantly surprised how good it was. I enjoyed the very professional and super kind cabin crew and the rather comfortable seat. I wouldn't hesitate flying them again anytime soon. We then took a bus to the terminal past Windrose's ATR-72 fleet just in case you're wondering what they look like. So guys, just made it. I am in Kiev. I'm gonna get my bag and then I wanna show you the great, the really interesting Soviet beauty hotel I'm staying at. So I'm gonna take you to Kiev and I'm gonna show you my hotel. Everyone knows her from our wonderful camera flight because we do an interview which is going to come out probably way before that video you have seen it and now we're going to explore my Soviet looking 
Ooh. What's my room number? What's my room number? Was it 12? It went dark for some reason. Josh, your camera went dark for some reason. Why not? It's like, oh, it's still uh, recording. Yeah, it's still recording. Oh, wow. That is Soviet, isn't it? This is oh, cool. Look at the TV. That is the. You know, when I booked the place, I was like, I saw um, room photos with uh, a flat screen. And I said, no, I want, I want, I want you. <laughs> They're nice, beautiful. I was looking through the rooms yesterday, through the interior, and that was one of the one that I managed, uh, that I picked up, and I said, "Yeah, Josh probably will that like that." Is it. Look at this! Look at this beauty. That is so nice, and it smells very Soviet as well. Look at the view, right in the heart. Oh, Let's see if we can even open the window. This is Maidan, Ma Maidan Square, Maidan. right? This Maidan is where Square. the revolution started, right? The orange one. And you start the yellow revolution. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's where the revolution started and it was always this, like, the most central part of the city. It's so beautiful, guys. Look at this. Stunning. All right, this was my Windrose uh, review on the Embraer. Now we're gonna grab something to eat. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, what else? And enjoy the next video. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay guys, this is it.